daughter of Lisa Ye was a businessman in China. The firm that my husband worked originally who sent him out to China, the Shanghai and Hong Kong export and import firm. They sent my husband out to China and he was three years in Hong Kong and he taught the uh, Chinese to use indigo. Indigo is a dye that was invented in, in Hecht in Germany. And he came out to Hong Kong to teach the Chinese how to use that dye. Before that, the Chinese used only vegetable dye. And you know, that is a big process to use vegetable dyes. You have to have a lot of vegetables. And the indigo was invented in Germany and it covered China. They did the millions and millions of business with the indigo. And my husband spoke Cantonese Chinese. I don't know how he learned it and how much he knew of it, but he could converse with Chinese. When a man was engaged to go out to the Orient in a firm, he was generally engaged for three years. He made a contract for three years. After three years, he got a vacation of three months and the firm paid for his trip to Europe to go home for his vacation. So in 1930, Otto had his first vacation. He went home to Germany and he had left the firm that he worked for and he opened his own firm in Shanghai and came back to Germany to buy merchandise for his firm and stayed in Germany for, uh, for about three, four months and gave orders for merchandise and bought merchandise. You see, they had nothing in China. Everything was imported, you know. He was ready to start a big export and import business. And the war broke out. He's in Shanghai because he had some money over there and he had rented a, a building. So he bought the merchandise and the merchandise was packed and on the ships to go to China via the Suez Canal. And the war broke out, you know, the First World War. And the ships with his merchandise were in Belgium on the way to China. And the ships were confiscated and he never got his merchandise. And it was all paid for. Germany declared war and Germany had the colony in Tsingtao, the Shantung Peninsula, the capital of Tsingtao. And that was in German hands. In 1890, they had the boxers in China. The rebels who opposed England and opposed Germany and opposed France, you know. And in 1890, they killed the German ambassador in Peking. And uh, uh, Germany considered that a reason to demand advantages for, for having killed their ambassador. And it was supposed to be a, a lease. They were leasing it for 99 years. And in the 14 years from the time they took it over until the war broke out, you know, the First World War, they made Tsingtao the greatest spa in Asia. People came from, the rich people from India came for the summer to Tsingtao. They built a railroad. They built first class hotels. It was a fantastic town. Germany declared war. And then, after a few weeks, Germany never expected it. Japan declares war on Germany. So the war was declared in, oh, I think it was the first week in August, if I remember well. And about August, September, I think, Japan declared war. So Count Waldeck, it was the governor of Tsingtao, the most gorgeous man you've ever seen in your life, you know. 
and he knew very well because he used to come into Shanghai and used to entertain him. And he got to the German club in, uh, you know, and he was always there when he came. So Count Waldeck telegraphed to the Emperor William II, what shall we do because Japan has declared war on Germany? Japan was on the side of the Allies. England and France, you know. And Waldeck did not know what to do. He had only 5,000 men and a number of German warships. At that time, the 5,000 could have still been either sent back to Germany or send them into China and take them out of the Kaiser answered him, we are fighting to the last man. 5,000 Germans against 40 million Japanese. And my husband was sitting in Shanghai. He had no merchandise to sell, he didn't arrive. So he joined the 5,000 soldiers in Tsingtao. You know, the Germans are very romantic and very uh, Vaterland people. So, my husband, Otto Riesinger, and this Mr. Dreyer were very patriotic. And they joined the German forces in Sink Town. And my husband and, uh, I think Theodor Dreyer was his name, we were very close friends, and a few other Germans joined the 5,000 in Tsingtao to fight for Germany. They had a corporal, and the corporal made the people get up very early in the morning to uh, maneuver. And there were a number of soldiers that had risen to me. The, it's, a, it's a disease in, in, in the Orient that almost everybody gets. It. And he made those sick people get up and start to maneuver to their dysentery. And my husband couldn't go, he was in bed, he was very sick. And he went into the toilet. And while he went in the toilet, a bullet shot right through it, to his bed. He came back and there was a bullet in, his, in the wall near the bed. If he had been in there, he would have been killed. And in six weeks, the war was over. And all the 5,000 people, with the exception of my husband, were taken prisoners of war by Japan, and they stayed in prison there until 1920. Otto knew where everything was, so at night he sneaked into the office, nothing was locked there. There was a, a book you know, with all the names of the soldiers that were there. And my husband, as busy, he was on the last page. And he tore out that page. So they didn't have his name. He walked. The Chinese helped him. And he walked out of Tsingtao at night. And he walked for eight days. From Tsingtao, from the peninsula, all the way down to Shanghai. And everywhere when the Chinese helped him, because the Chinese knew the stories and they didn't like the Japanese and they hated them to come and they take over Shantou. If the Kaiser had had any brains, he should have given the Shantou Peninsula back to the Chinese. That would have saved the 5,000 German soldiers. And he never got them back anyhow after the war, you know. So the Chinese, and they would have made friends with the Chinese. Instead of that, the Japanese took it. Because the Germans didn't give the Shantung Peninsula back to the Chinese, because the Japanese went in there, the Chinese hated the Japanese, and they hated the Germans. I have a book that Otto wrote. 